Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Tamina. Um, I'm a Poly alum, class of 92, very long time ago. So is Christine. Hi. Um, Christine and I went to Poly together also class of 92, um, and we even went to college together So um, at Brown. So here's Christine. She's going to talk to you about um, what she's been doing, I guess, since high school. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'm going to take a seat so I don't feel totally on the spot. Um, I would love to hear, what did the poster say, and why are you here? <laughs> anybody want to volunteer? Anybody, anybody? You just happen to be here, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I've definitely dabbled in that world. So I'll talk about kind of my experience um, post poly. But um, as Tamina mentioned, I graduated from poly in 1992. Went to Brown back in Providence, Rhode Island. Kind of wanted to get a different, a different experience from our uh, Southern California life. At Brown, I majored in American Civilization, which is now called American Studies. Um, it's basically a hybrid of literature, history, and culture studies. And then within culture studies, I actually had another focus, which was material culture. So studied things like architecture, the urban built environment, um, the automobile in, you know, and how it, how it related to America and California's growth. Um, has anybody taken California history here yet? Anybody? Okay, so no seniors, or is that a second semester thing, maybe? Oh, they don't offer California. Oh gosh, okay. There, there is City of Angels. Like okay. In LA class. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So, I remember at Poly, we you know we had California history, and I loved that class so much, and I think that was one of the reasons why I ended up doing American Civilization and and uh, Material Culture Studies um, within that. So. While I was at Brown, my main extracurricular activity was working at the radio station there. Um, it was called WBRU, and I worked kind of on the business side there, so promotions and marketing. So um, getting people to kind of listen to the station, um, increasing listenership, and then also working with businesses in the area to kind of help them drive customers into their business. I should backtrack, because I think my interest in business goes even before I was at Brown. So even when I was at Poly, my big activity was yearbook. That was one of my big activities. And I was the business manager for the yearbook. So I guess I've always been interested in business. Um, around junior year at Brown, I just kind of started seeing where my friends who were seniors in school started going um, in terms of their career. So a lot of folks just went off to grad school. They were going to medical school or law school. I knew I wanted to do something in business, but I wasn't sure what. And a few of my friends had gone into consulting. So I decided to kind of explore that world and applied to a bunch of consulting firms, and that is where I landed for my first job out of school. So consulting is kind of just working with businesses on a specific issue that they have, and spending a usually three to four month stint, sometimes longer depending on the company, helping them to solve their issues. So in my area of consulting, it was actually operations focused. We worked with companies like c -core, Corning, so this was as people were kind of inventing that unbreakable glass that everybody has today on their cell phones. Um, this was in the late 90s. Working with IBM, um, so they had some human resources issues. So all, all kinds of things like that. Um, it was a really good introduction to the business world as a first job out of college because I got to see a variety of companies. They tend to be really large ones because they had budget to go you know, hire companies outside to help them with their problems. Um, look at a variety of problems and just it was very almost academic right you're there three to four months and then you're out and onto something new the the other fun part was just being able to travel all over the United States obviously I'm from the Pasadena area I went to, to the East Coast for school and this was sending me to kind of like the Rust Belt and other interesting parts of the United States that I would otherwise never have seen so I was like in the Cleveland area a lot I was in North Carolina Georgia um, so that was just interesting from a personal perspective being able to see the country I think the big, you know, big reason I didn't love consulting was because you were just in at that company and then you would give them your recommendations and then you would have no idea if your recommendations were actually getting implemented and what happened after. It was like you just moved on, you got, you got assigned to the next thing. So, um, but that said, really great first experience out of school 
And then when I was there, a friend of mine from my radio days at Brown gave me a call and said, hey, I'm working at a startup in Santa Monica. Um, Want to come back to LA? So at the time, I was still back east. And it sounded really interesting. It was kind of the beginning of Web 1.0. So I came back. Um, this was a Web 1.0 business called Hollywood Stock Exchange out of Santa Monica. The idea was to create a stock exchange where the securities were movies and movie stars. Um, and so it, it kind of began as a game, right? Just like people betting on like, OK, if this movie comes out, how much box office is it going to do? Um, and then ultimately, that company was acquired by Cantor Fitzgerald, which is a really big bond trading firm out of New York. And they tried to take it and make it a real stock exchange. The, the long story, kind of the punchline, is after all these years of the company trying to go that way, um, the Securities and Exchange Commission went, uh -uh, no way. There's too much insider trading around Hollywood. Like, There's no way this kind of stock exchange would fly. But when I was there, and when I was just helping to, to get the company started, I was the 13th employee there. Um, I started out as a product manager, so kind of thinking about how, does, how do consumers interact with this thing? Um, you know, what does it do? Working on partnerships with companies um, to kind of get our name out, out there. And then ultimately kind of working on different projects. Like actually I became, my title was producer of special projects, which means, gee, we need to get stuff done. Somebody's got to do it. And that became my job. Um, so really fun. That was my first taste of being in the startup world. And then I kind of was just thinking, what do I want to do next? And thinking back to my consulting days, I had a lot of mentors who had gone to business school. And so that was definitely one of the options in my head. So I said, all right, I'm going to apply to business school. I think that would be a good next step for me because I maybe wanted to try marketing, try something different. And it's hard to just go from a tech business and then say, oh, I'm going to just now go switch into marketing. So I applied to business schools, um, got into Harvard Business School. And so I went back east again. So I was kind of like hip hop, hip hopping and bouncing back and forth between the coasts. So um, spent two years in Boston going to Harvard Business School and learned just kind of a variety of stuff, right? Accounting, finance, marketing, general management, um, leadership, et cetera, et cetera. So great academic experience, a really big school for a graduate school. Uh, there were over 900 people in my class. So I'm still out there in the world and people say, oh, you graduated in this year, do you know so-and-so? And, -so? and you kind of go, no, I didn't. I never met that person because it was so big. But um, the positive of the big, you know, having going to such a big school is it's a big network. And so today I'm always meeting people, and you kind of have an instant connection there. Um, not in the same way as having the poly connection. Like when you meet other poly grads when you leave here, um, it's pretty special. And in fact, I actually have a story, but I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. So after business school, uh, well, actually during business school, 9-11 um, happened, which was obviously awful. Um, but the, you know, the economic aftermath of that was that the, the economy was in pretty rough shape. Um, this was in the early 2000s. So I, along with 25% of my Harvard Business School class, graduated unemployed, which is kind of unheard of. Um, usually anybody with a Harvard Business School MBA, you, you get out and you have a bunch of job offers. So at that time, um, I was already with my partner, who's now my husband, and we decided to come back to LA. Um, and from there, I just said, okay, I want to try to get my foot into marketing, let's, let's see what I can find. And landed at Teleflora. So they're a company on the west side, um, owned by a family called the Resnicks, which was, they were in the news recently because they made like a $750 million donation to Caltech. Um, so they own companies Teleflora, Palm Wonderful, Fiji Water, some brands you, you probably have heard of. Um, so Teleflora was a network of florists, and I worked on consumer as well as florist marketing for the company. That was my first taste. Um, from there, I went to Yahoo, which at the time was, was a good company to work for. Now I, I would say not so much. Um, but we were kind of in the beginning of the search marketing space, so competing against Google. And um, that was really fun. So that was business to business marketing and really learning about search engine marketing, which you know, I would say almost all marketers today have to know that skill. But back then, it was just kind of the beginning. So it was cool to just be in, in this new business um, and kind of saw how a, a large corporation kind of operates. So at the time I joined, um, it was actually Overture, which was started here in Pasadena. That was the search engine part. Yahoo had just acquired them. So it was kind of going through um, an acquisition process. So that was interesting for me. Um, from there, I decided to try the startup world again. 
and met up with the founder of a company called Fanlib, which was do, doing user-generated video content targeting teen girls. It's a very specific niche. The idea was um, you had these professional content producers saying, hey, we're going to create some web series, and the topic is this XYZ mystery. And if you want to submit a storyline, a picture, a piece of video, we'll incorporate it into our professionally produced content. So that had a pretty strong following. And the other fun part be about being in that business at the time were, were kind of two things. One was social media was just taking off. So I got to kind of just see um, Facebook take off, like you know, be an early joiner of that company you know, as, as a user, and, see, and then also as a marketer. Um, and then the other piece was working in the YouTube, kind of on the YouTube side of the world. So um, I'd love to see, like for you guys and gals, um, do you spend more time on YouTube or like television in terms of getting entertainment? YouTube. Right, yeah. So it was really fun to be part of that world and see the YouTube stars that were kind of really growing at the time. They're, they're, these are folks that are probably still in the top 100s, but they're people who are now, you know, they were in their teens and 20s at the time, and now they're in their 30s and, they're, you know, 30s and 40s. Um, so really fun to kind of see the, the YouTube world and how you gain followers or subscribers in, the, in that, that universe. Um, so that was T1E, or FanLib. While I was there, we were acquired by Disney. Um, so I had two years kind of in this startup land where again I was one of the first 13 employees and then all of a sudden this big corporation came and acquired us and they said, yeah, we want to kind of learn how to do this kind of um, user-generated content and they ended up incorporating the technology into Disney Channel. So the idea was like, hey kids, you watch this show, you know, dress up as your favorite character and we'll put you on the air. So same concept but just, you know, it was Disney-fied. Um, so that was interesting. I got to work in a much larger organization and see how that operates. But then through that time, I was like, I'm not a big company person. That's not my thing. Um, so I ended up back in the startup world again, um, but more of a mid-sized startup. So Green Dot Corporation, also a Pasadena company, ended up um, yeah, moving to Pasadena. So it's in East Pasadena. That was in consumer finance. So the idea is like a prepaid debit card. These are the the audience that it targets is called the unbanked population. So people who really like can't even open a bank account oftentimes, they'll go to a local Walmart or a Rite Aid and pick up a, a debit card and just apply cash to it. And then it works like a debit card that would be um, attached to a bank account. So also learning more consumer marketing and kind of a whole host of things related to that. So kind of going back to my past and using um, search engine marketing, using social media, and then also email is a really um, big method of marketing. And it still is today, even though it seems so old school. Um, you know, email is a really big method of marketing to consumers still. Um, so that was Green Dot. And then after Green Dot, went to Caviar. So that was a restaurant delivery company that was started out of the Bay Area. And they were looking for somebody to start their Los Angeles operation. So um, went for that. And that was, as you can imagine, like a very fun business because I got to work with all kinds of restaurants all over LA. I got to eat a lot of good food, um, which I loved, but it was also like very heavy on customer service, operations, logistics, um, really good experience. And then another time, I mean, I feel like I've been super lucky in my career because when I was there, we were acquired by Square. So everybody knows Square, um, the, the swipe, um, credit card swipe company. So really cool. Um, got to you know, go to Square headquarters and um, to, you know, kind of take part in some of the learning and education that they provided as a larger company. And um, you know, see Jack Dorsey speak. Like he's, he's just a cool guy. Um, so that was a really, really interesting experience for me. And then, wow, I've been at a lot of companies. Um, then FastPay, which is based here in West Hollywood, and it is in media finance. So the idea was, let's say you operated a blog and you had ads on it, and as the blog operator, you maybe had to pay one or two other people who you're writers or whatever, um, but you were waiting a long time to get paid because that ad that's on that site was bought by, let's say, Procter & Gamble. They're advertising downy fabric softener. They went and bought the ad at an ad agency. The ad agency went and bought the ad through some digital media supplier. And the digital media supplier is then placing all the, you know, all the ads across the internet. 
And so by the time the blog had you know, paid their writers, it was 90 to 120 days later. So um, the kind of gap that FastPay filled was to help those bloggers and other kind of media publishers finance their business sooner. Um, so just close that financial gap. Um, while I was there, we wanted to get into the payments space. So payments is a huge multi-billion dollar business in the United States. And um, we decided the fastest way for us to get there was to kind of test a little bit. So I worked on some product launch there related to payments. And this is actually called virtual cards. And we can get into this, this very detailed um, FinTech stuff. So we kind of launched this thing. We said, OK, this works. And then we decided to actually acquire a company that does it to get more of a head start. Um, so I worked on an acquisition of a company kind of through the due diligence process. It was out in the Boston area. So I then found myself back on the East Coast, which was nice. I got to see a lot of my East Coast friends again. And then we acquired the company. And I helped kind of through the, um, the merging of the company, bringing on new employees, um, kind of getting people to blend cultures and stuff like that. So really fun. and interesting kind of general management experience for me. And then a little over a year ago, got a random LinkedIn message. And it was from a person I hadn't seen in years who was an acquaintance friend of a friend of mine from Yahoo. So like think about like all these dots right that are connecting over time. This is really interesting. And I knew him only socially. I'd literally only seen this person at parties and socialized with him. And he's but he actually turns out to be a very successful venture capitalist on the west side, um, which I would never have expected is the other funny part, you know, right? So 12 years before that, I'm like, this guy? I don't know if I'd ever expect that he'd be a successful VC. Um, so he said, hey, uh, can I pick your brain? It was a very cryptic message. And I, I said, OK, because I knew he was a fintech investor. And then he ended up saying, oh, I'm invested in this company called Papaya. Um, they're looking for a head of growth and marketing, and the CEO um, wants to meet you. So I said, OK, that sounds interesting. So I went and had coffee with the CEO, um, yeah, just September of last year. Thought that the business idea was really cool. So the idea of Papaya is it's an app that allows you to take a picture of any bill. So your parents are getting bills from doctors, dentists. Maybe they're really old school and they're getting their utility bills still to the paper. I don't know. Um, just take a picture of the bill, and then we send the payment information to the merchant or the provider, and it's done. Um, and once you've set it up the first time, it's, you can take a pay bill in like 10 seconds, which is pretty awesome. Um, and just last week, we launched a new iteration, which is to connect into email accounts. So if, if people are getting bills in their emails, um, you know, boom, it's going get, to get taken care of. So um, I joined. I was telling Catherine and Tamina earlier. Where did Tamina go? She's hiding. Oh, oh there. Um, when I joined, I was the 10th employee. And so this was just October last year. And we're now at almost 40 employees. Um, myself, my own team, I started with two people. And I now have 14 people on my team. So it's been just insane to go through this kind of growth. I don't think I've actually experienced this sort of growth at a company before um, in terms of just hiring. So we have a really busy recruiter, as you can imagine. Um, I spent a lot of my time in the past year just interviewing candidates just to build the right team. and. Not only is it cool to be part of something totally different and new, um, but to be able to build a team and impact the culture has been really exciting, right? To, um, to build a diverse and inclusive um, culture, to make sure people are still having fun. Um, that's, that's been kind of the, the fun parts of working at a startup. So I got the 10 minute sign from Catherine. Um, and I think that means it's Q&A time. Do you want to have questions? Or yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I just think it's fascinating everything you've done, and I'm just really interested how much of your initial undergrad degree or experience did you use from that? Because it seems like you went straight into the business world or something yeah. like that, and then you got an MBA, and then you went into the startup world, right? Yeah. Like, how much of the American studies did you actually do? Yeah, um, really good question, because American studies has practically nothing to do with what I do, right, uh, from on paper. But the, the skills you learn with a liberal arts education are what's really applicable to many roles. Whether you're a scientist, an attorney, or a business person, it's critical thinking, like really asking questions. If something seems funny, asking more questions. That applies to the business world. So it's actually stuff that everybody's learning here at Poly, um, critical thinking and, and kind of the intellectual thinking part that kind of carried over through my undergrad years and now through my career. Yeah. How do you build this like, joint network? Because 
you mentioned so many businesses that are in so many different locations. So do you just have a lot of friends from different areas that also connected with other people and then connected with you? Or how do you yeah. Build? Is that like an everyday bell? <laughs> That's really disruptive. Um, so that's a great question. I think there's, my network spans a lot. Like it actually goes back to Polly. Like, you know, John Keatley, for example, um, who is a year or two ahead of us, yeah. he became the CFO at Green Dot. Um, so your network starts with Polly. Um, it goes through your undergrad network. It goes through every single person you work with. It is anybody you go to grad school with. Um, and I think the key thing is like, be a good person in your whole, in every facet of your life, right? Like this random person that I would casually talk to at parties ended up being my connection into this current role that I have. So um, yeah, it's, it, I guess that if I wanted to be kind of more strict and moralistic about it, it's, it's like really, you know, be on your best behavior. <laughs> like, um, you know, like it, it is really like, just be a good person and, and the universe will kind of work out, I feel like. Question? You just showed up and you have a question. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I was interested in the question that person asked about the glasses with, um, with about liberal, about your like liberal arts education. Okay. Like, would you say that? So the most important thing you learned is like the critical thinking part, right? Like to always ask questions. Like no question is a stupid question. Yeah. That kind of thing. Would you say that means that's basically like it would like the most important thing you learned is that you have to undo the teachings that a lot of like the American education system? Whoa, that gets into kind of education philosophy. I don't know if it's about undoing what the American education system teaches so much as really like kind of digging deep in asking good questions and I agree with you like there's no there shouldn't be no such thing as a stupid question in the workplace like if somebody brings up some weird buzzword that I've never heard I'll say I've never heard of that what is that um, yeah I, I, I think it's just it's okay to not know things and in fact most of the time you don't know things um, and and that's really important to acknowledge right I think people who come into any business or you know whatever environment and they come in and they get they think they know it all they're in a really bad place right <laughs> like nobody knows everything um so that's an important thing to to always acknowledge and keep in mind yeah. i did not answer your question but it was also way over my head <laughs> so so i have another question regarding uh, startups you're in a lot of startups and i know like the statistics like 80 percent of all startups like, fail yeah because of like teamwork so how did you out of all the startups you've been in, like they've all succeeded in some ways. So how do you let your companies succeed? Yeah. What aspects of the company are allowed to do that? Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, there's a little bit of luck. I just feel like I am very lucky with my track record. Um, but some key things are, you know, when I looked at the product or the market, there's this concept of product market fit, right? So do you think people are going to use this thing or um, you know, will businesses use, you know, spend money on this thing? So does this business as a concept, number one, seem viable? Like that's a really good question to ask when a company's at 10 or 15 employees, right? Do I, do I think this is going to work? And then the other really important part is who's running this company? What's their background? Um, do they have a track record for success? And so as an example, Caviar, um, the founder had already previously sold another company. So he had kind of a track record of success. So I thought that was a really good sign. And then um, the current company that I joined, the, you know, the CEO is a Stanford MBA and has been in the venture capital world before. And the CTO was at a company that sold its technology to um, Roomba, you know, the, like the vacuum cleaning company. So they both have had kind of successful careers in startups already. And to me, that's a really great indicator of future success. Yeah. Is 
Is there, okay, I want to make sure I heard that correctly. Is there anything that I would change about what I did when I was younger? Like, or just like some regrets or things you wish you could have done. Regrets. No, I mean, overall nothing comes to mind in terms of <laughs> regrets, thankfully. I feel like I've overall made pretty good decisions. I'm thankful for that. Um, yeah, so no, nothing comes to mind in terms <laughs> of any major regrets that I have. But like, would you have done, would you have participated in certain things that would have helped you understand? That's a good question. Yeah. I guess if I, if there was one thing I maybe would do differently, it would perhaps be to just kind of go out outside of my comfort zone a little bit in whatever area. Um, so Polly allowed me to do a little bit of that. Like, for example, I'm an extremely clumsy and uncoordinated person and I took dance here. And that was good. It kind of like, it really did take me out of my comfort zone. And so I encourage you to do that um, at Polly and in college because those, those are the best times to mess up and and have fun and and be safe you know trying and getting out of your comfort zone so i think that would be my advice thanks everybody for spending your lunch with me